I am someone that actually uses Google Assistant pretty regularly. I have the Nest speakers pretty much one in every room of my house, home hubs in two rooms of the house, and I use it for timers. I have it set to routines to turn off different lights, all the different smart outlets all throughout the house. And like I said, I use the Google Assistant quite a bit. The primary way a lot of people use the Assistant is just simply by saying the phrase, hey, you know what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say it because it'll turn on your speakers and it'll turn on my speaker behind me. But on my phone, I actually keep that setting disabled. And the primary reason is because half the time, here's, here's what happened. I would pick up my phone. I would say, hey, hmm. And I would ask it to send a text message to someone. And a speaker would have heard me and said, I can't send a text message yet. And I'm like, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my to my phone, actually. So it just it got on my nerves. And I figured so in the house, the speakers are going to pick it up. And it's going to override my phone. And when I'm out of the house, I'm not going to use that anyways because I'm out. I'm not gonna, just going to start talking to my phone. So I would tend to use the gesture, whatever was on the phone. And that gesture just seems to keep changing. For a while, you would long press the home button. Then it turned into that pill you would long press. And now you're supposed to do this weird... Uh, touch the corner and drag up to the middle thing that I have a really hard time getting to work, in particular on my Surface Duo. You're supposed to touch down here in the corner and then drag up to the middle. And it does work, but for me, for whatever reason, half the time when I'm just using one hand like this, I have a hard time getting it to trigger. For whatever reason, it just feels awkward to me. So my favorite implementation of this sort of thing is just when it has its own button and I go back to my OnePlus 7 Pro which has been turned off for quite a while as you can see my long long list of notifications <laughs> but the implementation here is super simple you don't have a dedicated assistant button you've got two volume rockers on one side and a power button on the other but if you long press the power button you will trigger the Google Assistant if you keep pressing you get the assistant then you get the power menu. And I honestly, I almost never use the power menu, so having it trigger Google Assistant nice and quickly was really, really good for me. So I got to thinking, how could I replicate that on my Surface Duo? And that is when I stumbled upon Button Remapper. It's a super, super simple app. You basically just download it, give it accessibility permission, pick a button, and then tell it what you want to do. And the end result here, what I've done is I've set it to be the volume down. So when I long press volume down, I get a little vibration and then I get the Google Assistant. I tend to never just hold down volume down to reduce my volume. I tend to press it once to get the, uh, to get the UI and then I'll touch and drag where I want my volume to be. So that's not really a problem for me. But if you do like to hold down your volume to do that, Maybe pick a different button. I wish you could use the power button just like I'm saying, but unfortunately you can't. But for me, being able to press the volume button and get that assistant popping up nice and easy, nice and simple, is a really, really good solution. And it works really well when you're in book mode as well. I tend to hold it kind of kind of like this, and I've, I tend to have a thumb right there on, on near that volume button. I can just simply press and hold, do what I need to do, and it's done. Now keep in mind, with Button Remapper, you can map all sorts of fun things. You've got features like go home, back, pull up your recents, turn on your flashlight, which on the Surface Duo would probably be a bad idea because it's almost always going to be facing you. Take a screenshot, pull up settings, pull up the last app, on and on and on. Lots of really cool options in a free app that might do you some good. So guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. If you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a Scary If Literal member. You'll get access to a whole bunch of emoticons to use with live streams, and a shout-out on an upcoming video. Thanks, as always, for your continued support.